Welcome everybody to this seminar tutorial. In this tutorial, what I will do is I will tell you how to do your seminars. So as you know, seminars consist of two things. Uh, before we get to that though, let me just tell you that it would be most helpful if you watch this before you watch the library orientation. So it, um, e either way is fine, but uh, this would be more helpful if you watch it first. So here I am in Canvas, and I'm going to click here on modules. And if we click on modules, we can see some important things here that will help us out today. First of all, we've got some seminar handouts. We'll get into each one of those and I'll explain them in just a minute. And then right here we have uh, seminar one, seminar two, seminar three, and seminar four. Each of these contains the topics. So you will choose a topic. So let's just click on seminar one, make it a little bit bigger here zoom in and you can see that seminar one is due Tuesday February the 5th and so up here are some instructions every time we have a seminar I will pass out to each of you a page like this with the, the same instructions at the top at the bottom will be 10 or so different topics so here are the 10 topics you will choose one of these topics you may not get the topic that you choose because what I will do on Tuesday when we get together is I will send around a sign-up sheet and whoever gets the sign-up sheet I'll send it around the room and if you sit say in the back of the room you may get the, the sign-up sheet last so you may not have much of a choice uh, on what topic you choose you may not get your first choice so look through these topics and find what might be of interest to you I've got chapters right after each topic this means that you can find the topic, for example, of Jamestown in chapter two. You can find the chapter, uh, the topic of the Great Awakening in chapter four. This will be important as I will explain in just a second. So let's start by going over uh, this top information right here. These are the instructions. So this is seminar one. So a seminar is simply a meeting for giving and discussing information. This is kind of like what companies do when they go to a conference room and have meetings. They're giving and receiving uh, and discussing information. You're going to be doing this. You're gonna be practicing that in, in this history class. So you will be talking about these 10, or, or at least uh, your group will talk about some of these topics. You won't talk about every one. Each person, by the way, in your group will have a different topic. So you will be learning something different from each of your uh, group members and they will learn something uh, different from you. All right, so in these seminars, what you will be doing is you will be teaching your group one of the topics below. Um, and so you're gonna select one of those topics. All right, a seminar actually consists of two parts. One is the paper and one is the presentation. So let's start with the paper. For each seminar, we're going to have four of these scattered throughout the semester. Uh, let's just take this first seminar. For this first seminar, you're going to type a minimum of two pages on your topic. So you're going to choose a topic, and then you're going to research that topic, and you're going to type at least two, a two-page summary of your topic. You can type three pages. You can type four pages. Uh, maybe don't type five. Let's just keep it perhaps between two and four pages. Everything you turn in this semester, every typed paper will be double spaced, 12 point font. And I don't have it on here, but you need to either remember this or write this down. You need to use Times New Roman font. Okay, when you type this paper, that will be a minimum of two pages. You will upload it to Canvas and I will grade it there in Canvas. Uh, this thing is due before class begins on the day of the seminar. So this seminar is due Tuesday, February the 5th. You need to upload it before 8.30 on, on February the 5th. If you upload it at 8.31 or thereafter, I will take five points off the top. So instead of starting with a 25 out of 25, and then I'll grade down from there, you will start with a 20 out of 25. So don't be late turning these things in. Okay, so this, let's start right here. This paper should be a brief introduction to your topic. Um, it is gonna be brief, of course, it's only two pages. You need to use correct grammar, 
You need to know how to use capitalization, how to use periods, commas, complete sentences. I will be grading for this stuff. If you miss a comma here and there, have a grammatical error here and there, I will not take off individual points for those. But if your paper is full of grammatical errors, I will take points off because it's just when a paper is not clear, does it, is it organized uh, clearly? It doesn't, it has a lot of grammatical errors. It's just difficult to read and I will take points off for those things. Okay. So it's going to be a minimum of two pages. You should use at least two sources. So you don't know anything, for example, about the Columbian exchange yet. So you're going to have to go and do some research and you need at least two sources. One source must be your textbook. This is one of the reasons I wanted you to spend the money on the textbook. And this is also the reason I put the chapters down here. If you get pre-Columbian America, go to chapter one. The textbook must be one source. All other sources, you, you're only required to use one more source besides your textbook. You can use 10 more sources, 100 more sources. But whatever many more you use, all of them must come from the Collin Library. There are databases, there are books, there are journals. This is, uh, and, and if this is confusing to you, well, how do I use the library? That's why you need to listen to the library orientation next. All right, as in any paper, well, actually not in any paper, since this paper is so short, I don't want you to directly quote your sources. You put, put the, the, your research information in your own words. Don't directly quote. You need to follow correct procedures found in my handout for citing your sources. I use the, I want you to use the Chicago Manual of Style. This might come in handy uh, when you're doing library research. It will, it will certainly come in handy as far as um, how to cite your sources. So some of you are wondering, what are you talking about citing my sources? When you, let's say you use the minimum of two sources for your paper. You need to let me know where this information came from. You're not creating it yourself. You're not going out and digging in, uh, in the dirt to find pre, uh, uh, ex explanations of pre-Columbian America. You are going to be relying on other historians who have done the work. So you need to cite them. I'm going to tell you how to do that in just a second. Let me go ahead and show you what your paper should look like. This is what your paper should look like with one caveat. That is, this is just a one page paper. Yours is going to be two, but you're going to, to um, your paper will look very similar to this. This is 12 point font, one inch margins at the top, one inch margins over here on the left, one inch margins over here on the right, one inch margins at the bottom of the page. That's important. Uh, I'm using Times New Roman here. I want the, your name, the date, and your topic at the top left-hand corner single spaced. If you do not do this, I will count either two, I don't know, either two or three points off. I don't know, but you need to do this. By the way, let me just go ahead and say here, a lot of this, paper is simply you following these instructions. Oh, you're going to do the research. You're going to type an introduction to your topic and I will grade that, but I will also be grading on these basic rules. For example, did you put your name, date, and the topic at the top left-hand corner? The rest of your, and single spaced, the rest of your paper will be double spaced. And notice I've got one, two, three, four paragraphs. At the end of each paragraph, I've got one of these little numbers here. One, two, three, four. These are footnote numbers. Footnotes are these citations down at the foot of the page. So some of you might have used footnotes or end notes in the past. Do not use end notes. Use footnotes. So you're, you may be wondering, how do I create that little one right there? If you're in Word, uh, uh, typing this in a Word document as I'm doing, you go up here to References. You insert a footnote right here. Let's just go ahead and insert one. It inserted number two. Um, and you can see 
when you do that, it takes you to the bottom of the page. And here you can type in your citation, but we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to delete it. But that's how you insert a footnote. Rather than footnoting every single sentence, footnote paragraphs. This is just a suggestion, but footnote the end of each paragraph. What this does is tells me, the reader, where you got all this information in this paragraph. So where did you get this? Uh, you, didn't, you didn't know this before. I can see that one. I go down to the foot of the page and I see, ah, he, he got this from Mary, uh, Marion Hamilton's article in this journal called The American Speech. And there's all this other information on page 423. If I wanted to see this myself, then I could easily um, uh, look at these footnotes and go find the information myself. Every single paragraph has a footnote, at least one footnote. All right. And there's a little period there that goes at the end of the footnote. Don't forget that. So you may be wondering, well, how do I, how do I know what to type here? It looks like there's specific information in each one of these footnotes. And there is, and I'm glad you asked that because you've also got, let me just get these out of the way for just a second. Go back to canvas in modules. And so we were in seminar one. So here is that paper we were just looking at, that example paper, the seminar paper example. You, you've got access to that. Now I'm going to this document called footnote documentation. And so what this is, it will look like this. This tells you how to document or cite your sources. So if you get some information from your textbook, which you will, You'll put it in the book, you'll, you'll put it in your paper, and you will put it in your own words. Do not type word for word out of any source. That's plagiarism. Um, so, well, it, if you don't put it in quotation marks and if you don't cite it, it's plagiarism. You're not going to put anything in quotation marks because you're not going to directly quote your sources, but you are going to borrow information from them and put it in your own words. And when you borrow that information, you have to footnote that information. And so when you footnote that information, you've got to tell me, your reader, where you got it. And that's what this page tells you how to do. If you, or when you get information from your textbook, this tells you how to do it. How do you, how do you cite or doc, uh, document a, a book? You do it just like this. You put the author's name, put a comma, you put the book title in parenthesis. You put all this information. By the way, you would find this on one of the first pages in the book if you don't know how to do this. Close the parenthesis, put a comma, and then put whatever page number or page numbers you got that information from and put a period at the end. So again, let's go back to this example paper, there's a footnote, you go down here and you can see, here's our textbook, here's a good example. Here's our textbook. Author's name, Eric Foner, comma, the title, the title of a book is always in, uh, is in italics. And then you can see it was published in New York uh, by this publishing company in 2014. And I got that information here. This is footnote two. I got all this information from pages 477 through 478. So that's how you cite your textbook or any book. And I've got an example here. If you use a journal article, here is the example of how you cite, or, or here is how you cite that author, article, title, name of journal, etc. And here's an example. If you use a magazine, if you use a newspaper, if you use a website, then you, this tells you exactly how to do that. By the way, websites, I don't want you Googling these topics and then using uh, the results from those Google searches in this paper. You, again, your sources have to be the textbook plus at least one other source which must be from the Collin Library. So if you use sources from the Collin Library, you're not going to be using Google. And again, the library orientation will tell you, will show you how to, how to 
um, use the library to research for these seminar papers. All right, let's go back to our seminar one document here or instruction. So that's the paper. Let me see what else we need to know here. Do not directly quote your sources. Those citations, by the way, that I, there are different ways to cite sources, different standards. The standard that I want you to use is the Chicago Manual of Style. Everything, by the way, in this footnote documentation sheet, all of these examples here are Chicago Manual of Style. Remember, to plagiarize means to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as your own. The way around this is to use footnotes and use your own words and then use footnotes to cite that information to tell your reader where you got that information from. Okay, so that's the paper. Paper is worth 25 points. By the way, the whole seminar is worth 75. Paper is worth 25 of that. The presentation is worth 50 points. All right, on seminar day, the class will separate into small groups that I will assign. You will then, each person in that group will then teach those, uh, the, the rest of the small group about your topic. You are going to teach for six to eight minutes. Uh, in other words, this is a, you can look at this any way you want to. You can look at it as a speech in front of a small group of five to seven people. You can look at it as a presentation, as a conversation, however you want to do it, but you are going to teach your, the other people in your group for six to eight minutes. So you got to prepare not just the paper, but you got to prepare some kind of presentation that will last at least six minutes. Be creative. Um, you can come in and just actually don't just read from, from your paper. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a minute. Well, one reason why is nobody wants to hear you read from a paper. Um, if you've had speech class before or given speeches, you need to, uh, what you need to do here is write notes down, notes of main points that you want to cover. You can use index cards. You can type something out on a, a full piece of paper or two pieces of paper, whatever works best for you. When I give my lectures in class, I use full pieces of paper with main points listed on that paper. Um, I don't read my lectures. I, 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 I follow my, my notes, and that's what you will probably want to do here. Some of you will be good at this. Some of you will actually memorize everything you want to say, and you won't use any notes. Great. Some of us can't do that, so we need prompts. We need notes. Um, consider using slides. If you have a laptop or maybe an iPad, something like that, then put slides on there. Have handouts. Tell stories about your topic. What you type in your paper, you don't have to necessarily talk about that. In fact, you will want to talk about much more than what you have in your paper because you can read a, a two-page paper in just a few minutes, but you need to talk at least six minutes in, in, in your presentation. So do not read from your paper. You're just going to bore people if you do that. Instead, use notes or memory. Um, by the way, if you do want to show slides, don't show video clips. I want this to be you talking, not some video. <sighs> okay, following your presentation, each person in the group is going to ask you at least one question about your topic. So this is a little Q&A um, that will not be part of your six to eight minute presentation. This will be after your six to eight minute presentation. So every group will have a timer and that timer will time you. And when you finish, the timer will stop and then there will be a Q and A. Everybody in the group will ask you questions. And then when somebody else in the group gives their presentation for six to eight minutes, when they finish, you along with everybody else in your group will ask them a question. All right. Now you're wondering, how are we gonna get graded on this? This is worth 50 points, the presentation part. How do we get graded? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Here's how we're gonna do it. For every person in your small group, again, it'll be five to seven people, you will get one of these seminar presentation evaluations and you will evaluate each speaker in your group. 
So what this means is everybody who speaks will be evaluated by everybody else in their group. So let's say there are seven people in your group. If in my group, if I were to speak, there will be six of these seminar presentation evaluation sheets for me. Uh, and so, so when you get this, what are you going to do? You're going to write the presenter's name here, whatever his or her name is. Don't write the total yet because you don't know the total. As they're presenting, you're going to grade them on this criteria. How often did they read from their paper? Did they read, never read, or read very little? Give them a 10. Did they read through the entire presentation? Give them a one, two, or three. Uh, did they read through most of their presentation? Give them a three, four, five, six, something like this. The scale is one to 10. The more points they get, the better they did. Was the presenter prepared? You're going to know it after the second sentence, most likely, whether or not this person was prepared. This is a 20 on a 20 point scale. Were they very prepared? Give them a 18, 19, 20. Uh, kind of prepared, maybe a, give them a 12, 13, 14. If they completely forgot the seminar was today, but they winged it, I'd give them a zero. They're just not prepared. And here you will write out your question, the question that you ask that person. I'm, I just want you to do this because I'm always curious about your questions. Here you will evaluate their response to your question. Did they give a very good answer? Give them a 10, eight, nine, or 10. Did they ignore you and not answer you at all? Give them a zero. Now, let me say this. When, when you are asked a question about your topic, you may not know the answer. Don't make up an answer. You still need to respond in some way. So you might, you might respond like this. That's a good question. I don't know the exact answer to that, but I do know this, blah, blah, blah. So when, they ask, when you're asked a question that you don't know the answer to, feel free to kind of answer a different question. You have to respond in some way. So answer maybe a different question that might uh, indirectly uh, shed light on whatever the question is. Think of a politician. When politicians are asked questions, they, they rarely answer the question. Instead, they answer kind of, they give an answer that, that they want to give about, uh, uh, usually not about the question. So kind of think like a politician here. And then finally, you're going to grade them on overall, how was their presentation? Um, was it not very good? Give them a one, two, or three. Uh, excellent all around, give them a 10, were they creative? And so this is where you consider such things as creativity. Did they have handouts? You don't have to have handouts. Did they have pictures? Did they have slides? Was it well organized? Were they clear? Were they uh, somewhat enthusiastic? Did they master the subject? Think about these kinds of things. Also make sure uh, to consider whether or not they spoke the six to eight minutes. Did they just speak four to four minutes? Ooh, I would give them uh, a two or three. If they don't speak the minimum of six minutes, I would not give them a very good score here, but that's, that's up to you. All right. And then any comments that you have, uh, you can certainly write those here. Give me the time of their presentation. You'll have a timer. That timer will tell you how much time uh, and then put your name at the bottom. Now, no one will see these evaluation sheets except me. I will not hand these out to the people you've evaluated. I will not tell them what score you gave them. This is all just for me. And so when, when you give your presentation and the other six members of your group grade you, I will take the total because what you're going to do is you're going to add up this, 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 and this, and you're going to put that total, it's going to be at the most of 50. And I'm going to average those. So if there are seven people in your group, I'll have six of these evalu evaluation sheets for each of you. I will take the total and average that, and that will be their, that, that will be your uh, seminar presentation grade. Then I will add your paper grade to that, and so you will get some number out of 75. Now, what this means is you will not sink anybody. Let's say you give really low 
scores to all these numbers and you're worried about sinking somebody, well, you're not going to do it because there's an average. They're going to get an average for their, uh, for their final total. All right. So that's the presentation part. Uh, I don't want to do that. I do want to do this. Um, so, so that's our, how the seminar will work. Um, so now what you need to do is watch the library orientation and then you can better understand how to do the research for these, how to use the library to do research. Remember, you've got to use a textbook and then the rest of your sources have to come from the Collin Library. On Tuesday when we get together, I will pass around a sign-up sheet and so you will see your name in a group. I will put you in a group of five to seven people, and then you will sign up for your topic on Tuesday. So be prepared for that.